The Punic Wars are a classic tale of the famous Thucydides trap. The growing might of the Roman Republic was bound to face the well-established mercantilist power of Carthage. The Western Mediterranean was not large enough for both nations, and for 120 years its shores and seas were to be stained red with Roman and Carthaginian blood. Our journey over this century of warfare begins in Sicily, where two city-states clash and throw the spark that will steer two great powers into direct confrontation. This series of wars would be later known as the Punic Wars. Prior to the Pyrrhic Wars, Carthage, with its capital in what is now Tunisia, had come to dominate southern Spain, much of the coastal regions of North Africa, the Balearic Islands, Corsica, Sardinia and the western half of Sicily, in a military and commercial empire. By 264 BC, both Carthage and Rome were the preeminent powers in the western Mediterranean. The two states had several times asserted their mutual friendship via formal alliances, most recently around 279 BC against Pyrrhus of Epirus. Carthage went as far as to provide Rome with war materials and even ferried Roman troops. Relationships were good with strong commercial ties. In 289 BC, a group of Italian mercenaries known as the Mamertines, previously hired by Syracuse, occupied the city of Masana on the northeastern tip of Sicily. The Mamertines regularly raided their southern neighbor Syracuse. In 270, Hiero II, a former commander under Pyrrhus, defeated the Mamertines in a pitched battle, and he was crowned the king of Syracuse. By 265, Hiero renewed the war against the Mamertines and besieged Messana. Outnumbered, outgunned and hard-pressed, the Mamertines sent a request for help to Carthage. The Carthaginians who had a fleet nearby came into the port of Messana, pressing Hero II, king of Syracuse, into taking no further action and convincing the Mamertines to accept the Carthaginian garrison. But as the Mamertines were barely able to fend off Syracuse, it soon dawned on them that Carthage would be the next threat to their power. To prevent that, the Mamertines called on Rome to help. A considerable debate took place in Rome as to whether to accept the Mamertines' appeal for assistance. Acceptance could easily lead to war with Carthage as the Punic garrison was already at Messana. The Romans had previously not shown interest in Sicily and did not wish to come to the aid of soldiers who had unjustly stolen a city from its rightful possessors. However, many senators still saw strategic and monetary advantages in gaining a foothold in Sicily. The Strait of Messana is an important route for traders coming from the west into Italy and southern Gaul, and if traders can pass by, so can enemy fleets. Holding on to Sicily could give the Romans control over who can cross from the eastern to the western Mediterranean, and would give them rulership over dozens of large, profitable commercial settlements. The matter was put before a popular assembly in 264 BC and persuaded by promises of spoils of war and riches, the people voted to accept the Mamertines' request. Apius Claudius Caudex was appointed commander of a military expedition with orders to cross to Sicily and place a Roman garrison in Messana. That same year, two legions, 9,000 Romans, landed on the shores of Sicily. The Carthaginians must have been caught off guard as the landing was poorly opposed. Perhaps they did not expect the Romans to come to Sicily. Regardless, once the first Romans set foot on the sands of Sicily, it was official. The Punic Wars had begun. The Mamertines, hearing that two Roman legions are soon to arrive, they expelled the Carthaginian garrison from Messana. But as the Romans near the city, so does a joint Punic and Syracusan army who camped for a siege. Together they outnumbered the Romans, numbering close to 12,000 men. Being outnumbered and trying to avoid an all-out war against Carthage, Claudius tried to negotiate with both Syracusans and Carthaginians, but to no avail. Despite outnumbering the Romans, the allied armies were encamped separately and Claudius prepared to defeat them in detail. The Battle of Messana was nigh. Claudius first moved on the Syracusan army. The smaller Greek force braced for impact as the Roman infantry fell on them. The cavalry from both sides clashed in the flanks. The Greeks under Hiero held out valiantly, but the Carthaginian allies never came. Eventually, the hoplites crumbled under the weight of the legionaries and withdrew back to Syracuse. After this first engagement, Claudius prepared his army to meet the Carthaginian force. In similar fashion to the previous engagement, the infantry met ferociously in the center. The men would fight for hours, neither side being able to gain the upper hand. 
As men fell on both sides, it was clear that this would be a bloodbath if neither side withdrew. The bullish Romans were not retreating. Seeing his men bloodied and tired, casualties mounting, Hanno, the commander of the Carthaginian army, ordered a retreat. The Battle of Messana saw 6,000 Carthaginians and Syracusans fall compared to just about 1,500 Romans. The fields by the city were stained red. Without the help of Hiero, Hanno couldn't defeat the Romans, nor take Messana back. He would go back to Carthage only to be crucified for being expelled from Messana without fighting back. The Romans threatened Syracuse but didn't have the numbers for a siege, nor a fleet for a blockade and as such withdrew from Sicily, leaving just a strong garrison at Messana. Their goal had been achieved short of signing a peace treaty. Little did the Romans know that yet another costly conflict had just begun. As for Carthage, they thought that wars in Sicily were long and costly, and that at the end of the war little had been gained and much had been lost. As such, they prepared to defend. The Carthaginians felt confident in their naval superiority and thought it was just a matter of time until the Romans realized there was nothing to be gained from fighting in Sicily. The Punic Wars, however, were in full swing and neither side were fully prepared for the human cost and ramifications of what would happen over the next century. If you enjoyed this essay on the start of the Punic Wars, I recommend the videos on your screen right now. Have a great day, stay wonderful, Wolf out.